Find all cube roots of minus 8 in the complex numbers. Then, sketch these points in the complex plane. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to solve z cubed equals minus 8. That's what we mean by a cube root. That's the same as trying to find all solutions to z cubed plus 8 equals 0. Since we're over the complex numbers, we're going to have three solutions. First approach, the Moivre's theorem. What the Moivre's theorem gives me is a recipe for taking a complex number, raising it to a power. We could use the binomial theorem, but that'll be too much heavy lifting. Now, what's the recipe? I start off with x plus iy, that's my complex number, put it in rectangular form in the plane, that's gonna be the point xy. I switch the polar coordinates, we get r theta, and then I can go back to complex by r cosine theta plus r sine theta times i. If I wanna to raise to a power, what do we do? I wanna take r, send it to r to our power, take theta, send it to theta times our power. So in our case, we're gonna use power equal to three. It's gonna send r to r cubed, theta to three theta. The complex number that we get, that's gonna be r cubed cosine three theta plus r cubed sine three theta times i. That's gonna be our z cubed in the equation. Now, how about minus eight? So in complex form, minus eight is minus eight plus zero i. That's gonna be the point in the plane, minus eight, zero. We switch the polar coordinates, we'll have r is equal to eight, theta is equal to pi. So our point is back here, that's minus eight on the x-axis. Then I get that just by moving along that ray by eight. Now, we set our z cubed equal to our minus eight, which is gonna be eight cosine pi plus eight sine pi times i. We're gonna match up like items. So it's gonna mean r cubed is equal to eight. And then we'll have three theta equals pi plus multiples of two pi. Now note, if I just use three theta equals pi, we're gonna get one solution, pi thirds, and then I'm gonna miss the other two. So we add multiples of two pi, so that when I divide by that three, we catch everyone, okay? If we keep taking multiples of that two pi, we'll get more solutions than we need, but once we find three that are distinct, we know we're done. Let's put some numbers to our equation. So I have r equals two, theta equals pi thirds plus n times two pi over three. If I let n be equal to zero, we have pi thirds. So cosine of pi thirds is one half, sine of pi thirds is square root of three over two. So we get two times one half plus square root of three over two i, or one plus square root of three i. If I let n be equal to one, we get pi thirds plus two pi thirds, which is pi, cosine of pi is minus one, sine of pi is zero. So I get minus two, and that checks the answer we already know. The cube root of minus eight over the real numbers is minus two. Then we let n be equal to two, we get five pi thirds. That's gonna be the multiple of pi thirds, that's in the fourth quadrant. So we know we'll have, okay, the same cosine, same x value. So cosine's gonna be a half, and then the sine, which is the y value, is just gonna be same sine, but change the sine on it. So we're gonna have minus square root of three over two for sine of five pi thirds. We simplify, and then we get one minus square root of three i. So the sketch is gonna be these three points here. The check on my work, we know they have to be evenly spaced and they are by two pi thirds. And then note, zq plus eight has real coefficients. So it's roots, if they're not real, they're gonna be complex and they're gonna occur in complex conjugate pairs. So we note one plus square root of three i, one minus square root of three i is a complex conjugate pair. Now, another approach, we just factor z cubed plus eight, set it equal to zero. Solutions to that are gonna be our cube roots. We get one root for free. So cube root of minus eight over the reals is minus two. So we're gonna divide into z cubed plus eight 
by z minus minus two or z plus two, what comes out will be a quadratic, and then I can hit that with the quadratic equation. Now to do our division, I'm gonna use synthetic division. So our roots minus two, I load in my polynomial. That's gonna be one for z cubed, zero for z squared, zero for z, and then an eight. So the method is you add down your columns, then once you have the sum, you're gonna multiply by your root, move it to the middle row, one column over, and then repeat. So drop the one, multiply by minus two, we get a minus two. Sum, I get a minus two. Multiply by minus two, I get a four. Sum, I get a four. Multiply by minus two, I get a minus eight. Sum, I get a zero, and now I interpret. So what this says is z cubed plus eight equals z minus a minus two, or z plus two, times z squared minus two z plus four, plus a remainder of zero. So that just checks our work. We know that this thing divides evenly into z cubed plus eight. Now, we apply the quadratic equation to this term. What comes out is gonna be one plus or minus the square root of three i. So that checks the work we got using method one. A final check in our work, if I take our z, cube it, we expect to get minus eight out. So if we take our first root, one plus square root of three i, if I multiply it by itself, what's gonna come out is minus two plus two square root of three i. Okay, note we're gonna get a minus three here because i squared is equal to minus one. All right, I'll take our minus two plus two times square root of three i, multiply it again by one plus square root of three i, so that's gonna be our z cubed. We know what comes out is gonna be minus eight, so that checks. Okay, for minus two, pretty straight shot. Minus two times minus two gives me a four, times a minus two gives me a minus eight. And then for our third root, we'll use a little trickery just because it's nice to pull out identities that we don't use all the time. So the one I wanna use here is if I take two complex numbers, okay, take the complex conjugate of the product, it's the same as if I multiplied the complex conjugates together. So in this case, I'm gonna note that one plus square root of three i, complex conjugate equals one minus square root of three i. Then if I take one minus square root of three i, multiply it by itself three times, I could say that's one plus square root of three i conjugate times itself three times. Then by the rule I just stated, I could take the bar over each of those and just put it over all of them at once. So that means instead of conjugate, 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 and then multiply, I'm gonna multiply, 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 and then conjugate. Now, I just worked this one out, that's gonna be minus eight. So I'm left with minus eight complex conjugate. But minus eight's a real number, so it's complex conjugate, it's gonna be itself. So again, I get minus eight. And then that checks our work. There's nice pictures that go with these multiplications. So the idea is gonna be, if I multiply complex numbers together, the rule is multiply the r's, add the angles. So in this case, we have r equals two, theta equals pi thirds, let's see what happens. So if I multiply one plus square root of three i by itself, r times r gives me a four, theta plus theta gives me two pi thirds. So the idea is the radius stretches out by two, and then I just add the angles together. Then, if I multiply again by one plus square root of three times i, multiply that radius again by two, which gives us an eight, add the angles, so two pi thirds plus pi thirds, that gives us pi. So that's gonna land us on our minus eight over here. All right, let's take a look at the second one with the real number. So I had minus two. So minus two is gonna be r is two, theta is equal to pi. We're gonna multiply that by itself. So minus two, we're gonna take r equals two, multiply it by itself gives me four. Then we're gonna take theta equal to pi, add it to itself. That's gonna give us two pi or zero if we're only staying between zero all the way up to two pi but not including. So here's our first point, that moves over to here. Then if I multiply again by minus two, okay, we multiply by r which is two, so we get an eight. And then I add another pi to zero and that gives us our pi which brings us all the way back to minus eight. 